standing in your place. You stand in the presence of Almighty God. What a privilege it is. Thank you, Lord, that we can call on your name. Thank you for the Holy Spirit living in us. Thank you for the name of Jesus being given to us. And we stand in this victory that you have for us. We stand still and see the salvation of our God. We still know that I am God. We stand in the security of who you are and whose we are. We stand in the identity of Christ. We are seated with him in heavenly places. And we thank you and we love you for that. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you for this privilege. You may be seated. I want to read Matthew chapter 8. I'll do kind of for spiel. This is a remarkable portion in the scripture, and I just love how the Bible explains it. And I want to bring it over to you because it says the following Large crowds follow Jesus. Large crowds. Thousands. It has been said that at the day when the, uh, the Lord had his sermon on the mount, about 25,000 people were gathered. We also know from where he fed the hungry on that day with the fish and the bread, uh, in total about 25,000 people were around him. And then it says, as he came down the mountainside, a man with leprosy approached him, knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Then the Bible says Jesus reached out and touched him. Now, you have to understand in the days of the Bible with leprosy, the, those with leprosy had to live on the outskirts of the towns and the cities. They were not allowed to be part of community, part of society. The other thing, when people would come close, they had to, by the law, shout out, unclean, unclean, unclean. Think about that. If you had leprosy, this was what you had to do. You had, were not allowed to be part of a community. You were not allowed um, to come close to people. And here the Bible says that Jesus came down the mountain. There were a lot of crowds. This man cried out to Jesus and he knelt before him, a sign of worship. I just love it. And you know what happened? The Lord turned to him, he reached out, and the Bible says he touched him. It was also not allowed to touch people with leprosy in those days. So the Lord reached out and touched him. Listen to this. And this says, it started out by saying that they were a large crowd. If you worship God in a large crowd and you reach out, he will touch you. That is the heart of our God. That is who He is. He will always see the one reaching out to Him, and especially in worship, especially when we are desperate for Him, our Abba Father. And the Bible says, and He said to the man, I am always willing. Isn't that a beautiful word? He is always willing to meet us where we are. He's always willing to help us, always willing to heal us, always willing. Never will he, for those that approach him, turn them away. I read this the other day, and it's so true. No one, no one in hell that is in hell today will ever be able to say one day that Jesus return, or, or, or turned away from them or rebuked them or chased them away when they approached him. Everyone that will come to him, he will accept. And the Bible says, he said to him, be healed, always willing, I'm willing to help, be healed, and instantly, instantly, the leprosy disappeared. So what is your need this morning? What are you trusting God for? All we need to do is by faith, reach out, amen, and allow him to touch you right there where you're at. Just close your eyes for a minute. Just think about your life, where you're at. Maybe it's a physical healing that you need the Lord to perform in your life. Maybe it's finances. We're going to minister on that as well today and see how God will bring the little that we have and He will bring it to a place of more than enough. But because with Him all things are possible, we serve an extraordinary God. And so Father, this morning we come to you, everyone, that has a specific need, you know us, you know what we need before we ask. 
You know what we need, the Bible says. So Lord, right now, we bring those specific needs, the specific request to you in Jesus' name. Right there where you are, just bring it to the Lord in prayer. Say, Lord, I bring this situation to you. And I thank you that as in the days with the leper, Lord, you reached out. You said, I'm willing to be healed. I'm willing for your needs to be met. I'm willing to help you because we turn to you. We worship you. We love you. In the midst of a crowd, Lord, you will reach out to the one reaching out in faith in you. So right now, you see every heart and touch everybody, every person in this room right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare healing over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare Lord, the Lord's provision over you, over your finances, whatever it might be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, say with me, I receive from heaven my provision. And I thank you for that, Father. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? We serve a good God, a wonderful Father. And we're so happy and so glad that we can always run to Him and come to Him. Amen. God bless you. Wonderful. I'm so excited about this morning's sermon. You know, I always have a sermon in my heart. And um, what is so amazing about this week is the whole of Wednesday and the whole of Thursday, I heard these words in my spirit. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit preparing the sermon. This was the words I heard over and over for two days, nonstop extraordinary God. That's the God that we serve. An extraordinary God. And so I studied the word and, and, and I looked at the meaning of this word extraordinary and it was amazed to see uh, what God, who He is, will do for us. And uh, we're also going to look at scripture, how it is the heart of God to show Himself strong on our behalf. How is it, it, it's the heart of God to want to come down and through for us in our situations. And it is our faith in Him that activates. It is not hard, it is not difficult to receive from God. You, you receive by faith, you just open your heart and say, Lord, I receive. That's it. As simple as that. As the man with leprosy came from the mountain, he met Jesus. Remember what he did. He worshipped the Lord. And we worship the Lord just now. And when we worship the Lord, we touch his heart and his eyes on each one of us as an individual. And all we have to do is say, Lord, I bring this to you. I trust you for this. And you will see the manifestation of his goodness in our lives. So today, I'm going to trust God with you for great things. That the name Extraordinary, and that's the God that we serve, will be a manifestation of exactly everything that describes how God will be a reality in your life. Amen. We can make it do with God's greatness in our lives. We can do with God's manifestation in our lives. Amen. So I've studied this word extraordinary. So let us just pray. Father, this morning we thank you that we can be gathered in your name, the name of Jesus. We thank you for the privilege to sit under the ministry of the word, just to spend time in worshiping you, loving you, and you loving us in return. We bring the ministry of the word to you today. We open our hearts to receive. Holy Spirit, you're the giver of faith. Come on, just come into our hearts and manifest the faith, the gift of who God is, our Abba Father, that, that our eyes will be open to see who He is and that He wants to do great things for each one in this room as an individual, as a child of His. So Father, we thank You that we receive what You have for us. And we thank you for the word being spoken under the anointing and for the manifestation of your glory and your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen means so be it. So, so it will be in our lives. The word extraordinary means the following. Remarkable. We serve a remarkable God. May we in our lives experience remarkable things in and through our lives. Where we work where we live, where we do family, where we come together as friends, that we will experience and that those around us will see uh, the remarkable things that God manifests in our lives. It also means extremely great. 
Not just great is our God, but he is an extremely great God. Amen? That's the God that we serve. That's our Abba Father. It means that he has special qualities. It means amazing. May we be amazed by what he does in our lives. May we be amazed at every day. This morning, driving here 7 o'clock to open up, I looked at the mountains and it was crisp and clear and so beautiful. And now for a minute, I was just amazed at the beauty of nature and how thankful we are to see and experience. Yesterday when we got, uh, fetched the kids in the farm, on our way back, all over the farmlands from here to Paketburg, you see the beautiful corn and, and the, is it the wheat or wheat? Wheat. Wheat with the tea uh, coming up and everything is green and you see the mountains. It is beautiful. And in my heart, I just rejoiced. We had a minister from Kateng with us years ago and we were driving down Durban Road, Durban Road on this end and she saw all the wheat. And she says, what is this? I said, wheat. She said, what? I said, yes. <laughs> So I said, that's So it means that we serve a God that is amazing. It also means this word, fantastic. Oh, I pray that God will reveal and do things in your life this week that you will just say, fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? Because it's just who He is, an extraordinary God. It means that He's incredible. Oh, I love the, the, the meaning of these words. Incredible God that we serve. A marvelous God. An outstanding God. A surprising God. Who loves surprises? Woo! The lady says, Amen. Amen. May He surprise us, each one of us. Yes, we know it's holiday and we slow down and, you know, relax. But, but may God manifest the, the surprises that he has for each of us in our lives this week. Suddenly, even when we sleep, may, may we just see the provision, the, the awesome surprises that God has for us in our lives. You know, many times you plan things ahead and um, uh, say... This is what we've done many times. We plan a holiday just to break away a little bit. And obviously finances need to follow when you're, when you're on the road, etc. And plan and sleep over. And so many times we've planned a holiday. And the week we have to leave, there's literally 10 rand in the bank. Yeah. I don't stay at home. By faith, I'll put the last 10 rand in the bank and I'll hit the road. I'm telling you. Because Pastor Colleen Sneijman, our pastors from the Lighthouse, taught us as youth in many years ago that if you have the last 10 rand left, what do you do? Do you, do you, do you stretch it for, 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 for four breads over seven days? Now you take it and you eat pizza and you rejoice in the fact that you're alive. So she taught us. And we've done that. Literally, that is faith. Because without faith, we will not experience the extraordinary things that God has for us. And that's what we're going to look at today. If we don't step out of the boat, if we don't, um, you know, just by faith, trust God for the manifestation of all these things, we're not going to have it. So I'm ready to have it. So even with 10 rand, we would leave and go on holiday. I, we've arrived at our destination so many times that I can remember that years later I would sit at that same spot and I would be reminded of the previous holiday. We sat there looking at the bank balance with literally zero in, but we on holiday and we had something to eat every day and we had provision to get back home after the holiday. And under those down our career has said, it's fair on the high place to find out. My God shall always foresee in our lives. That's the God. He wants to manifest. He wants to show Himself strong on our behalf. But it is faith. Our faith in the small things, like, <laughs> like taking the last ten rand and giving it to somebody else, that He will see, and that faith will cause Him to look at you and bless you. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's sermon. So. May he surprise us. And the one translation also describes un, uh, us as uh, extraordinary as unheard of. May he do things in your life, in my life, that is unheard of. Yes, 
I'll show you, it's biblical. Um, to the point where you find it strange. Mag jy hier eens dinge. Strange things do in our lives. May your, your husband who never made you coffee in bed make his first cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Strange things. <laughs> okay, and I'm just joking. We don't need to come for rivelijks berading in die weekend. But also to the point where he does it differently. Because he is different than all other and greater than any other because he is God. That's the God that we serve. And our scripture for today is the telephone number of God. 333. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Look at this. I love it. The Bible says, call on me. It's an invitation from God. And I will answer. And then we're happy. But the rest of that verse goes on to say, and I will, not only will I answer, but I will show you great and wondrous things. Oh, come on, who can deal with some great and wondrous things in our lives? May the boring of everyday life, sun up to sunrise, sunset, may it disappear. May we live in constant daily wondrous things and glorious things and great things that God reveals to us. Who's ready for that? Say with me, I receive it right now. The King James Bible says of this verse, Call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. Come on, that's the heart of God. Not just to answer our prayers, but also on top of that, to show us great and mighty things. The New Living Translation says, Ask me, and I will show you remarkable things. I'm, I'm ready for remarkable things. I mean, whose, whose finances is in a place where you can see and trust for remarkable change? Amen. He wants to touch every area of our lives, not just our health, our forgiveness of sins, but, you know, spiritual, but all and every aspect of our lives. At the workplace, in all that we do, remarkable things will happen because we serve an extraordinary God. Then the Amplified of that same verse says the following. Call to me, I will answer you. And I will tell you and even show you, God says, great and mighty things. Things which have been confined, limited by man, listen to this, and hidden. Things which you did not know or understand and cannot even distinguish, recognize. So God wants to do things beyond what we can think or ask. Hello? Beyond what we can imagine. Does scripture not say that He is able to do abundantly above what we can think or ask? Come on, let's stretch our faith. Let's open the door to God to do extraordinary things in our lives and walk with that expectation every day as you go to work, as you rise up, as you do your day, um, just to go and experience exactly what God says. In 2 Chronicles 16, 19, the word says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. I vision this every day. When it's a new day, the eyes of the Lord searches the whole earth. Look at this. In order to show himself strong. Not just to answer our prayers, but to be an extraordinary God. To do remarkable things in our lives. It is the passion, the heart of God to show himself strong. And then for those whose heart are fully committed to Him. So as you, you are fully committed because you are here this morning. For your heart and the revelation of God's power and strong and strength to be revealed in our lives. Way over in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Paul wrote about these things. Look at this. He says, for what the eye has not seen, nor the ear has heard, nor the mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. Come on, the best is yet to come. The extraordinary revelation of things, manifestation of things is yet to come. How do I receive it? You receive it by faith. You receive it before you see it in the natural. We're not moved by what we see. It is by faith that we study the Word, receive the Word of God in our hearts, that you receive it in the Spirit and you see the manifestation, the outroll of it as you do life. Amen? In His time. But it's our faith that will activate those things to be called down from heaven, released down from heaven over our lives. 
So I believe with you today that there will be a manifestation of exactly what I'm preaching about in your life. Amen. And that you receive these things that God, even the things that he has prepared for us because he loved us, the things we have not seen, not heard, not even imagined. Because he is an extraordinary God that does surprise, amazing, wonderful things, glorious things. May the Lord show himself in this manner. Who is trusting God for this right now? Father, you see every hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have you are a bar maker van u woord. Laat het so wees in ons levens. Lord, we receive, as Mary said, let it be unto us according to your word. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name, right now. Amen. Hy kan ver doen bo wat ons kan dink of vraag. Sommige van ons, some of us, has a wild imagination. A huge, big imagination. Janos, it's a kind of the kijk, zij het dat denken in a, in a, in a, she has an imagination that you will stand amazed. And the Bible says God can do far beyond, abundantly above that. That's the God that we serve. So dream with him, dream bigger and, and trust him for these things in your life. Jesus said all things are possible with God. Even the things that is impossible with man, all things are possible with God. And then it also says that all things are possible with him who believes. And that's why you have to believe before you're going to see it. Believe what the word says, believe who God is, and then trust him and believe that in the manifestation of our lives. I read the story a while ago of George Miller. Now this is a remarkable story. I was so touched to see what God did through a humble man. And what I did not realize as I studied his life is that most of his life, he was an evangelist, he was born in Germany, and early years they moved to England. He actually was born in 1805, and he lived till 1898. A good life many years ago. But you know what happened? Uh, he felt God, the call of God to do good. In those days there were a lot of wars in those regions. There were also a lot of uh, 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 viruses and, and sickness and, and illnesses and all kinds of things. So a lot of the parents lost their lives. On the streets were many children. And the Lord laid on his heart to look after the orphans. That, that was his call. That was his, he was also an evangelist, but that was his big legacy. And what happened is, in his lifetime, he cared for 10,024 children. Listen to this. He established 117 schools and he, 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 he fostered and helped 120,000 students in his lifetime through all those schools. And on top of that, he established 200 orphanages. orphanages. 200. In those days, where there were no money, where it was so tough, and it all came through seeing the need, all these children on the street, and the situation was so so bad, so sad. And what happened was, he, he loved the word. It has been said that in his lifetime, he read the Bible from cover to cover 200 times through. 200 times. He just constantly busy with the word of God. And so he saw these kids, and he, and he wanted to do something about it. And one day he was reading in Psalm 81 verse 10. And the Bible says this. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. <laughs> and this verse jumped at him. And he says, Lord, I see the children. They are desperate for, for, for help, for food. Please work in my life to be and do something for them. And I've imagined, I've, I've explained to you all the things he did, the thousands and the hundreds and the, and, and, and the, the orphanages, etc. he did. It all started with one verse. Open your mouth wide and the Lord says, I will fill it. That's like being hungry. You open your mouth. There's nothing to eat. But the Bible says, first open your mouth. The Lord says, then I will fill it. So he said to the Lord, Lord, I'll do this. But there's two things I will never do in my life. Number one, I will never ask for money. 
And number two, no one will ever know what, whether we have bread in the kitchen or not. I will never talk about what we have and what we don't have. Those are the two things he said to the Lord in the 1800s. Today it's, I would say, easier because there's a lot of people with open hearts and are blessed financially and they just want to give. In those days it was tough. It was, it was really tough. And so every night, every one of them that was under his care had a meal to eat, the Lord took care of all their needs, and he would spend time in the Word bringing his request to God, and he saw an extraordinary God doing amazing things through him, being a blessing to so many. He was accused of this in society, that he was the one, and let's say, I had the arm kinders voorgetrek. He was the one looking after those that did not have parents. And so many a times, God blessed them in such a way that they had a better life with those that had parents. But it all started with one who saw something, and he through the word, one scripture, open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And that's how he lived an, an extraordinary life, together with an extraordinary God. So I want to ask you today, what do you have? What is the passion or the, the desire you have to do for somebody else? What is the verse that might jump out at you as you read Bible that will cause you to take action? Because it's when we take action that we see the manifestation of the extraordinary things that God has for us. That is faith. Faith is the key to activate these things. And I want to ask you a question is, what do you have in your, in your hand? What do you have in your house? The miracle is always in your hand. Doesn't matter how small. God will always work with something that we have. Something that is within our reach. And we're going to look at the example of some scriptures and how God will always work with what we have and what we make available to Him. He will take the, 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 the loaves and the fish and He will multiply them. If you bring in the little that you have, he will do extraordinary things with that. The miracle is always in the house. Hello? Sometimes when you go through tough times financially, I will always look in the storeroom or look in the garage, things that I can sow. And so, because I know in the kingdom of God, if we sow, we will reap. Amen. And that's how we live in this constant flow of God's provision. To constantly make sure that I'm a giver. I'm a sower. There's always something. The miracle is always in my hand. Or always in my heart. In my house. In my garage. In my store. So that that can activate the extraordinary things of God in my life. That's how it works. So let's study. I just love the story of Moses. How Moses led the people of God. The reason God took them away from Egypt after so many years of slavery is so that they can go as a nation and worship God. That's why God led them out under um, uh, Pharaoh. And the Bible says this. Now picture this. The Bible more or less they say 1.7 million people were involved when they moved from Egypt. And so they fled, or they just started moving. We know the story of the ten plagues, and Pharaoh said, yes, go, and then he would change his mind. And eventually he let them go. 1.7 million, with the animals, here they go. I mean, there was no trains and buckies and cars and trucks. It was by foot, there we go. And so they came to the crossing of the Red Sea. There's a sea in front of them. And then Pharaoh changed his mind, I, I want them to come back. I can imagine that, because 1.7 million, that was the workforce of the nation of Egypt, suddenly gone. Their houses is gone, no one pitched up for work tomorrow, it's gone. So he changed his mind, I want them back. So he chased them with his army, and those days he was the mightiest army on the planet, Pharaoh, Egypt, trying to get the Egyptians back, the, the, the Israel, the people of God back. And so they came to the sea that is in front of them, the army that's behind them. You know what God said to Moses? What is in your hand? What is in your hand? He had a staff, a rod, a piece of stick in his hand. Listen to this. Exodus 14, 16 says, The Lord said to him as he stood in front of the sea, Lift up your rod, your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea. Something he had in his hand. Something as simple as... Picking up that, that rod, that stick, and pointing it, 
stretching it over the water. And then this is what happened, verse 21. As Moses raised his hand, as he raised his hand, what he did with what was in his hand, look at God, how he works, is the Bible says, the Lord opened up the path through the water with a strong wind. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into dry ground. So the people of God walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. And so I studied, I looked on purpose, what I, I love to picture something in the natural. With 1.7 million people that walked through the sea on dry ground, it took them seven days for that group to go through, seven days. Um, the, from this end to the other end of the of the, bore, of, 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 of the of the sea where the water started where it ended, it was a 17 kilometer crossing. The 17 kilometers must have been the stop of Druagrond, and the average depth of the sea was 490 meters where they crossed. Iemand sê so rek terug, sê hulle, nee, dit is nonsens, hulle het bewys, daar waar die Israelite voorbij is, is net enkel diepte. Toe sê dat, oh joh, dan is die heren groot, want hoe het die hele armie van die gipte laat gedrink in enkel diepte water? <laughs> Amen. So mense wil altyd afspeel en die wonderwerke van God plat probeer druk, maar God bly God. Amen. This was the enormity of what happened by Moses stretching out his staff over the waters and God performed this extraordinary thing in their lives. Then I just love, look at the, the little. Sometimes we think in our lives, I only have a little. I only have this much. I only have so much. But God has the ability to work with a little to make it more than enough to multiply that to get you to a place of constant provision because you give him the little that you have. So I want to say again, your miracle is in your hand. Your miracle is in your house. Amen. Activate. Use that to activate the extraordinary things that God has in store for you. So our first thing is this. What is in your hand? I want to show you 2 Kings 4, the story of Elijah. I just love this. The Bible says, one day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elijah and cried out, My husband, who, who was your servant, is dead. So Elijah uh, knew this man. And uh, you know that he feared God. And now the creditors has come, threatening to take my sons as slaves. So this was a financial, difficult, um, rock-bottom situation. Many of us today, as we do life, we go through tough situations financially. But I just love how God will take the little what we have and make that to be more than enough for every day. Listen to this. Verse 2. What can I help you with, Elijah asked. Tell me, what is in your house? <laughs> he didn't pray for a miracle. He didn't pray for manifestation of multiplication, suddenly an open heaven and suddenly there's money in the bank. He said, what is in the house? What do you have that you can use as faith seed or something to bring your miracle to your life? Tell me, he says. She says, I have nothing. Oh, oh, except a little jar of oil. <laughs> Isn't that like, that's how we are. We, you always see the nothing. We always see the not happy. We always first of all see the not enough. But we don't tend to see the what I have, the little bit. Because it's only what God needs is the little bit to turn it into the big things of provision and breakthroughs in our life. And then she said, Elijah said to her, go and borrow many empty jars and go to your friends, your neighbors, ask them all for empty jars. Go into your house with your sons, shut the door behind them, and pour the oil into those jars and set them aside when they are full. And she did what she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her. She filled all of them, one after the other. Soon every container was filled to the brim. Imagine that. A little jar, and you fill all these big gallons around you. Just full and full and full and full. Bring more jars, son. Bring more jars. 
full and fill, bring more jars. <laughs> Imagine the, what she as a person went through knowing that it's only this big and she kept on pouring, ending up with hundreds of liters of oil. Imagine the excitement. Imagine the amazement. Exactly our extraordinary description of God. She experienced when this happened right there in her house. And then she went to the man of God and told him what happened. Verse 7 says, And the man of God said to her, Go and sell the oil, pay your debts, you and your son, and live off the rest. <laughs> Come on. It is God's will to bless us financially. It is God's will to provide in our finances. Amen. But what do we have in our hands? The little that we have will always turn out to be more than enough. The little that we have will always turn out to bring the miracle to our house. Amen. Then there's another story again of, um, this is the other prophet, um, uh, Elijah. I love it. 1 Kings 17, this passage, what happened in this. Now, I must give you the background because Elijah had a powerful encounter. He killed 450 false prophets. He slaughtered them. <laughs> the next day, the queen of Bathsheba, or the queen of, 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 of wherever they were, sent, Jezebel came and sent the word. She says, I'm going to kill that man. And so he fled into the wilderness, and he sat under a tree praying to die. The previous day, he killed them. God came, a fire came from heaven, consumed the altar, and he killed 450 people. A mighty demonstration of power and great things in front of the whole nation. And one lady said, I'm going to kill you, the queen. And he ran into the wilderness. And then he said, Lord, I want to die. He had depression right there in the wilderness. And the Lord said, rise up, go. And then on top of that, there were famine and a drought. So there's no food. The Bible says God sent a raven, a cry, and a cry is that say, you know, that to feed Elijah. And so eventually God said to him, this is where we get to this story, to a widow. God said to Elijah, go and live in this village, Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I've instructed a widow there to feed you. Now look at this. <laughs> when you hear this, you think you're going to end up in the palace and there's going to be a lot. When he arrived there, this, this is what he met at the gate of the city. So he went to the town and as he arrived at the gate of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little cup of water? And she uh, on her way to fetch water and then he called out again, verse 11, also bring me a bite of bread please. Then she replied, now remember the Lord said to him, I have instructed a widow to look after you. And this is the one, listen to this. I swear to you, she said, man of God, that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. I only have, I only have a handful of flour and a little bit of cooking oil left in the jug. The reason I'm here, she said, to gather the sticks is to make our last meal that our son and, 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 and I can die after that. She had literally nothing left. And this is what happened. Then Elijah said to me, I love it. Don't be afraid. So many times in life we get to the end of the end. There's one bread left, nothing left. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Years ago, we had a, you know, when you start, start out in the ministry, you're excited many years ago, 38 years ago. Uh, so excitement, don't pay the bills. <laughs> so when we got the first salary check, I, went, I literally went to the lady at the church's uh, admin office. I said, is this weekly? Is this my weekly pay? You know, I was an area manager before that. And uh, big money and big bonuses and company cars and everything. So I was shocked. And it was a tough time for us. And um, one night, literally, we had four slices of bread left in the house. That was a Sunday night. The next day was a Sunday or Monday morning for kids to go to school. And we had four eggs left. And during the morning service, the senior pastor says, we have a visiting pastor here. Uh, with, can, uh, I said, uh, can you please just house him and that he will eat with you and stay with you tonight? 
I didn't say, we didn't say anything about the food situation. We gave them <laughs> for dinner uh, four slices of toast with eggs on it. And we didn't eat so that they can have something to eat. I mean, we gave them breakfast and dinner. Can you believe it? But we still eat today. We God will still God and He's still taking care of our needs. He will always do miracles in our lives if we put to use what is in our house and what is in our hands. The miracle is always within your reach. But God, by faith, wants you to reach out and activate what you have to that. Exactly what happened here with the oil. And now we see it again with this widow with the flower. And so he said to her, don't be afraid. I love that. Don't be afraid that this is your loss. Don't be afraid of, you know, the enemy is, is, he is slow. You pay all the bills the first of the month. Praise God, you made provision immediately in your mind. What about next month? How will I make it for next month? He's always shouting in your ear. And God is shouting, don't be afraid. He will supply our needs. He will make a way for us. He will come through for us. Then he says, but go ahead and make me first a bread and bring it to me. And then as you prepare the meal, do it for yourself and your sons. Then verse 14. For well, this is what the Lord of God of Israel says, that you will always have flour and oil left in your container until the time God sends rain, there was drought, and the crops will yield its harvest. Imagine that. You empty the jar, the, the little bowl of flour, and the little oil, and you make a bread. You know it's empty. You put it back on the shelf, it's empty. Tomorrow I'm going to eat again. You go to that same bowl, same jar. Oh, there's flour, there's, there's oil. And you make another bread. While she was sleeping, God made a miracle. Listen, the best thing we can do sometimes is when we're in a tight spot, just go and sleep. Because God wants you to be quiet and out of the way so that He can do the miracle. Because so many times we talk us out of the miracle. And we allow unbelief to clutch our hearts and fear and doubt to rob us of the extraordinary things that God wants to do. I can all buy and far. But I like to slap it in the year that we Come on. So go take a nap. As you know, as you know, what it can slap, but the slap will eat and slap good. Amen. And this is what happened. Verse 15. Oh, I love this. And then she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour, always enough oil left in the container, just as the Lord has promised. Listen, don't be unhappy, don't lose your joy, don't get afraid when you have a little, because in the little is the provision. In the little, it will be more than enough for tomorrow, every aspect of our life. Number two, Reageer altijd op Godse woord. Onthou die verhaal van George Miller, die was psalm 81 vers 10 uitgespring het, maak jou mond buit oop en ek sal het vol. En hoe hy daar wonderlijke lewe geleef het. Thinking about Peter, Matthew 14, 29, who walked on the water, and he saw Jesus in the middle coming at night in the storm, walking on water, and he said, Lord, if it is you, command me also to walk on the water. And the Lord says, come. And on the word, he came. The only man ever to walk on water with Jesus, Peter. Just because of a word, come. And then last and I'm going to end with this. And I want to summarize the importance of it is that faith without works is dead. It is so important that we do something. Because that's how this kind of faith works that I'm talking about. We want to experience the extraordinary things of God. It is this kind of faith, faith together with action, that will release the things of heaven into our lives. Look at James chapter 2, and I'm going to end off with this. Just listen to what it says. He says, what good is it, brothers and sisters, if you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? So we're talking about experiencing the extraordinary things of God. What kind of faith will save anyone? Suppose there's a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, so you know that. Then you say to them, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm and eat well. But you know they have no, no clothes, no food. 
But if you don't give that person any food or clothing, what good uh, does that do? Verse 17, you see faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is the de th those deeds are useless. Only faith without doing or using what you have. Verse 18, someone may argue some people have faith, others have good, good deeds. No. How can you show, let me show you my faith by my good deeds? Then verse 19 says, um, You say you have faith, for you believe that there is a God. Verse 20 says, No. Can't you see that faith without good deeds are useless? Don't you remember that our father Abraham was shown to be right with God by his action when he offered up his son on the altar? Remember that story? You see, his faith and his actions work together for his miracle. His action made his faith complete. And so it happened just as scripture says, Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was even called a friend of God. He had action. The Lord said, offer your son. God knew he's going to come through, going to supply his need, but just the action of putting his son on the altar was the release, that contact point of what he had in his hand, in his life, to release those kingdom things into his life. And look at this, verse 25. This is remarkable. Rahab was a prostitute. <laughs> now, the, this story of Rahab, after they went through the wilderness, through the Red Sea, through the wilderness, and eventually, after 40 years moving around, uh, God gave them the promised land. The first city they had to conquer was Jericho, a mighty city in those days with huge walls. We know the story how they marched around the wall and with a big shout, the whole wall came down. But first they sent out spies. And into this city, Jer uh, Jericho, these spies went. And the king of Jericho, which was a powerful man, heard about the spies in my town. And so the, the people said, but the spies is with Raya, the prostitute. You are on blade. My name is Chris, the prostitute. It's in the Bible for all eternity. <laughs> Just thinking about that. Always refer to her. But you know what happened is, the king came to her door knocking. Not the king. I mean, just imagine the situation. The same. Where's the spies? And she lied with a straight face. I think if you prostitute, you're able to do it. Sorry, forgive me. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. And the king believed her. And, and so she protected those uh, spies and sent them on another way. And their lives uh, were saved, the spies from, from Israel. And then they said, because you did this, we will spare your, your life and your family's life. So they, they removed her from the city, and that whole city came down. Everything, everyone died on that, in that city when those walls came down, when God handed them the city. And then the Bible talks about Raya in this passage. That's just the background. Raya the prostitute is another example. And she was shown to be right with God by her action when those, those spies were sent, and in safety, she sent them on a different way. So my brother and sister, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. And then there's a passage that says, this kind of faith, this is how it works, in this passage of James 2. So I want to encourage you, don't say, don't feel what you don't have, and how huge is the need of what I do want and need. Look at what's in your hands. Activate that by faith and see what God will do in your life. Do you receive the word today? Amen. And I'm so excited about whenever there's a challenge, I'm telling you, whenever there's a, a difficulty in my life or a scarcity in my life, I would always go back to these principles. Say, Lord, what is there that I can use to bring my provision, to bring the release of the wonderful things that you have in store for me? Amen. And so God will work with our faith. And when we activate that, He will do so much more. He will do always above and beyond more than what we can think or ask. That is the God that we serve. Do you receive the word? Yes. Praise the Lord. Are you excited? Yes. Praise God. Let's stand. Will you come again for us, please, Andre?
Andere het nou nie een lekker deeg gehad nie. Hy het gaan gym, en toe steel hulle sy kar steedels terwijl hy gym, en toe steel hulle alles wat in die kar is. Can you believe that? God's gonna repay you. Amen. Ek kan nou net sê, dit is een rede om ek die gym nie, ek is bang vir die diewe. I have a small testimony right in line with your word. Before, uh, of, after they would stolen everything and knowing we would be here this morning, the Lord said, double your giving. Yeah! <laughs> so that's what I did this morning. I doubled the giving. So I, I'm expecting a, a wonderful uh, outpouring of God's faithfulness as a result. So, Lord, you are great. You do what you say you're going to do. And you fulfill it in each of our lives. And so we bless you and thank you for that. We thank you for this word. We thank you that it will be activated in all of our lives. And we thank you that today, as we have opened our hearts and said, Yes, Lord, whatever you say, we receive. And we bless you for that. And I speak over every one of us the blessing of the truth of your word and the grace that will come as we say, yes, Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So be it. Thank you, Andre. Come on, stand up. Give someone a hug. Say, I love you. Please don't pack up anything. And remember, next time that we're going to have an online service. So you can like it in the bed and cat cake. Amen. Blessings. Like a dog. Love you guys. Have an awesome Sunday.